Hey, girls and boys. Um, so, up ahead we got some Aeons. They're not big ones. They're not small ones. They're just like 50, 60, 70 tons. I don't remember. They're not huge. They're not little. We got some heater parts we're replacing. Um, I go into a little bit of an explanation of how they work and whatnot, but I'm going to be posting a separate video in a couple of days that explains the gas heat like Barney style. So stay tuned for that one. Thanks for the subscribers. All the love in the world to you. Small rooftop, big building. Very interesting the way they, they uh, engineers made that one work. Anyway, enjoy. people good morning evening night 3 a.m. whatever day whatever time get off the thing this gets tighter as it goes up oh oh, oh. hey don't trust the bar until it's all the way out girl oh. oh hello son all right Hup. Okay. Nice. Always gets the heart going. What's going on over here? We got all the filters and whatnots. That's interesting. Wonder what's wrapped up in the... those are filters. Huh. That's interesting. Whatever. So, got a 130 ton Aeon right here. A lot more Aeons to come. This one I believe is a 70? No, might be a 50. Anyway, that's a 50. Oh. Then we got a 70, that's a 60, so, so. We got a 130. 70 and a 60. 70 and 20? I think that's a 20. What is it? I don't know. It's got some tons, okay? Some tons of an Aeon. Big refrigeration condensers here. Why are we doing the roof walk first? Let's do that later. What we got today, some of these heaters are not working. Um, I wrote on the side which ones they are. Hope y'all can hear me. I'm trying, okay? These are both firing off. Uh, two stages on one unit, one stage on another unit. Here's one right here. You can always tell when you feel I got heat coming out of this one. There ain't nothing but normal air coming out of this one. So there's one, uh, two, yep. And where's my third one? I think it's on the back side here. No, that one's working. This one's not even on. Must be at set temp three so this unit's got two that unit's got one i believe this one has yeah it's got four stages of heating and only two are running so this is the one we're going to tackle first since it's nice and cold outside why don't we just shut down the one that's not working the most yeah it's gonna get warmer later on, not a whole lot warmer, but enough to, ah, to not have to use all of these. So what I'm saying is, ideally, I would do this one last, but I'm not gonna do that. That's not the way I'm rolling today, all right? Ah, even in the winter time, you need that hydration, people.
All right. One of the things that I uh, mentioned in the past is that whenever you have these big RTUs going on here, if you're gonna do some work on them, that requires you to turn off the power. You need to make sure that the power is not directly integrated into the fire system. Because if it is, and you turn the unit off, you know, the good old, good old boys in the fire trucks are gonna come running. Because it's gonna set off the alarm. I asked them, they said it is not directly integrated. So when I shut them off, I know they're gonna have some type of an alarm because they are integrated into a building automation system. So somebody's gonna get an email, whatever. They know I'm gonna, I'm here. So uh, I'm not worried about that. This one is gonna take the most time. Basically what I'm getting is a, an open limit code off of the ignition module. There are two limit switches. It's gonna be the high limit and then there's gonna be a rollout switch. I checked continuity on both and they have continuity. So basically we're looking at what I'm going to do is be replacing the control module and both limit switches. That oddly enough is the same error code for all three of these. So pretty cut and dry, we got three ignition modules, three rollout switches, three high limits. All exact same model number regardless of the tonnage because these are all the same year model Aeons. So all of the heaters are exactly the same. The difference is some of them have more stages than others, but all the stages are the same. Um, do I have any questions? I don't know. I know some of these are gonna be really hard to get to, so I'm gonna to have to utilize, utilize some toolage here. I'm gonna need one of those. And I'm gonna need, oh, I hope I have it. There it is. If you ain't got one of these, you need to get one of these. I'll let you go sideways with the thing so you can go into like that. You'll see. All right. I'm hesitant to shut it down, but I have to shut it down. Let me pop these open first. Oh, the fingers are so cold, it hurts. Ow! That, damn it, that hurt. Oh! Go away, go away, pain. Let's do something with this. Let's have a, do it like this. There. Here we go. This one's firing. That one's going to town. This one over here is not given a error code that says oh that's given a different error code so we're going to reseat that pressure switch that one's giving me two flashes it makes me feel like i probably should have ordered uh the pressure switch for the inducers also which would have been smart but guess what I didn't use my brain, so let's see what this one's giving. That one's got a pressure switch alarm. That one's got some leak detector in it. I'm not working on that leak thing today. And back over here. Another problem with these is that, and I'll show you in a minute, the pressure switches, there's a air hose that hooks up to it and there's a rubber boot on the end. That rubber boot cracks. I don't know why, but I do know that we can fix that. Not a problem. So let's shut her down. Let's do it. We did lose the stage, which means that this thing is pretty close to set temp. Once I shut it down, it's going to be go time because I don't want this down for very long. And I have a feeling that once I do bring them back up online, I'm going to have to go to the computer and type some things 
in the thing to tell it to come back on. I don't know. We'll see. Ready? She's off. I don't hear any fire alarms, so I think we're going to be all right. Time to get on the ground and do stuff. Ignition module. One set, high limit, roll out. And I don't know if you can see this, but here's what I'm talking about. That pressure switch right there has a crack on the hose. That crack is gonna say, oh look, that thing's not even, that's not even doing stuff. That sucker's just wide open, you know? We got a problem with that. So, you know, electrical tape? I think that'll do the trick. We'll just tape her right on up. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. All right. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is replace this module because it looks like it's going to be the most difficult thing to replace. Because all the wires and stuff, you know? Oh, there's one that kicked on. Goodness gracious. That one's going to town over there. All right. Yep, zippy zippy. Oh, you didn't want to do the thing, did you? No, you don't want to do the thing. You're going to do the thing. There's one. Sweet. And there's only two screws in here. That one is gonna be really fun to get this. Got it, got it. Get off there. There's number two. All right, what I like to do with these, cause I don't like to try to remember, you know, cause my memory doesn't work very well. Um, first off, what we wanna do is take a picture just in case something does go awry we know which wires goes to which little dilly things and all the good stuff and we'll start seeing how far away that I can pull it from the wall which let's be real here people that's not very far I'm not gonna be able to do this like I want to so I'm just gonna have to unplug everything and remember what goes where get some electrical tape oh Oh look, extra, extra, extra. Yeah, bring the water, all right? Bring on the water, all right. Ugh. Open me up a new tape here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape these wires together that are married. When I mean married, I mean they're like, they work side by side, probably in and out switches something like that. I just know that they're gonna be one right next to the other so that when I do look at my picture later and I have two red wires, one goes on this side, one goes on that side, I'll know which is which because it's gonna be hooked up to the one that it's already on. How do you start the new tape? You know, tape is really hard to start and it's cold outside. Come on, come on. Ah, come on. Yeah, you can do it, there we go. So these two right here, says R and W. I'm gonna pull these off and tape them together because I know that they go together. And like I said, I'm gonna tape them together. Ugh. Those go on R and W. These alarm switches right here I don't hear the fire department yet, so I think we might be okay with not having them just come on up here and do stuff. And then we're gonna pull these off. Okay. This harness is easy. I don't have to tape it to anything, cause you know, it's only gonna go one spot. Let's see if I can take it off, goodness. It's not coming off. It's going to come off. It's just not wanting to. I'm going to try and do this without breaking the connector off. Because that flame just sensor just a Got it. Got it. And then tape on one more. These two right here. Hope y'all can see. 
Maybe that's better? I don't know. I won't even know until I'm editing. Inducer. Blower. And now all I got left is well, this guy right here, which they're already put together. And then this guy right here, which is the... It's not... It doesn't like to move. All right. Got that off. And then my spark. Come on, Sparky. Get over the top. Got it. You tag. Hey, on. That one's trash. Here's my new one. Let's go ahead and zip these screws right back in there. I'm going to be doing this three times. So I'm only going to show y'all once because uh, redundancy and whatnot. Get off. Get off. Um, it's literally going to be the same thing every time. I'm getting a call from someone I don't know. I'll be right back. Telemarketing people. I'm not going to use that screw hole before because this thing just it wasn't grabbing when I could tell when I pulled it out. I'm going to use this one right here. I don't really care as long as it has two and as long as they grab. It's not going to fly off. All right, people. Stop. Get. Oh, I'm not worried about that. Uh, flame goes right here on flame. See all the things that I remember we can put back right now if I can get the thing in the hole. Where's the deal? It's on the back. There, yep, yep. Ah, okay. We know the harness goes right here. Plugs right in. Uh, this one goes right here. This one goes right here. And so what I would like to see happen is this area that this serves to get so nice and toasty cold. Toasty and cold don't go together, do they? Whatever. Ow, that's hot. That went, ow, that coming. You think I've learned the first time? No. With me, I gotta, I gotta feel it twice, you know. I gotta, I gotta burn twice. These I don't remember. Hey, that's where I pull up my trusty picture. All right, trusty picture says the red goes on top, so these two go on R and W. That's W. And this is R, which. I'm an idiot, so I taped it so close that I can't pull it up. So I need to untape it. And I didn't leave a flag like a moron. And now I gotta figure the thing out without burning myself. Come on. Where's the end of the thing? Leave a flag, people. Do as I say, not as I do. Been a while since I've shot a video, so maybe I just forgot. Someone's actually gonna be watching me. All three of you, get off! What's going on here? There we go, kinda. Kinda like. Get. Ah, at least it's where I can move it. Is it where I can move it? Yes. That goes right on my R. Yep. Yep. Easier said than done. Get on there. There we go. All right, and then these, according to my trusty picture, the stripe one goes on top. These are my alarm wires. They're not to the building alarm. They are to alarm the module that something has, something has gone awry. All right, get over here. Okay, now the last thing I have is my flame or my spark igniter. And then I gotta fix the boot, the rubber boot on this inducer, which is, honestly, it's not gonna be very easy, as easy as it looks. Yeah, it will. Just gonna go around that with some tape. It's all nice and cracked up. 
It cracks me up. <laughs> I'm so funny. I know. sensitive the diaphragms in there but obviously if it's wide open like this was it's going to it's going to tell you that hey the thing's not working right um, I'm sure that boot is something I can order I just didn't I didn't see that when I was here last I saw it on one of the other units and all I did was what I'm doing now and it worked just fine I didn't see it on this one Okay, I think that's enough. Wow, just get off the thing. I can't, I don't have the leverage, people. Oh, man. Okay. Now, we're gonna stick that right back in the deal. Like so. That one is not done. I still have these limit switches, which are gonna be a fun. One's a rollout, one's a high limit. Oh, there's my high limit. Let's see if you can see that. Right there. And then my rollout is right there. I can't even see it. I can only see it in my camera. So, that's where the angle thing is going to come into play because I have no idea how I'm going to get that thing out of there. This one will come out like this. So basically, when it comes to heating, people, if you have to replace an inducer motor, a heat exchanger, gas valve, I don't care. Whatever component you have to replace in gas heat, replace your limit switches. They're cheap. And it's a good way to keep you from getting a call back because you could go doing all the stuff and then a week later your limit switch opens because they get crusty, rusty, they corrode. They do all the things that you don't want them to do and it's a simple, cheap, easy thing to replace. So just do the thing and replace it. Here's my new one. I'm gonna take note on which direction this is when I pull the old one out. Ugh. Yeah, because it's gonna come right out. Yep, it's not gonna come right out. Yeah, I might have to get a screwdriver in behind it. Which I just happen to have a pocket full of those things. I just can't seem to find one. I want to hear it. Nah. Tell me, look, I got that in the pocket. I don't know why. That's great. Here we go. This guy will work. I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but I'm gonna try. Uh, there's a gasket on it. I would assume, you shouldn't assume things, that the gasket would come with it. Well, this one did not. So I'm gonna have to try to preserve this old gasket. Come on. Oh. Okay, we're moving at least. That's a good thing. Just keep wiggling it until she comes out. All right, let's see if I can pull it out now. I get this other screw off. Okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna try and make it so y'all can see this. It's caught on something. I'm stuck in there. Try to go up, try to go down. There we go. It is facing upward. There's my sensor. So the new one, I gotta peel this gasket off. So let me get this thing out real quick and I'll show you. I'll show you in a minute. Should have probably pulled these leads off first, but there's me not thinking ahead or not thinking at all. Okay, that's not doing what I wanted to do. Ah, there's one. It doesn't matter which one goes to which side. It's a simple open and close switch. 
so nobody cares. Come on! Ugh, that one's having trouble too. Ugh. Okay, we're getting there. There we go. There's our limit switch and the gasket on it. I'd like, Aon, why don't you just bring the gasket with the new ones? So I don't have to try and peel this thing off and preserve it. I could just get a new one, you know? New things, Aon. Let's do that. Let's do better, Aon. You should automatically assume that if someone's replacing a sensor, a high limit, that they probably need a new gasket. So I'm not having to sit here and do surgery. This thing is warped. It's seen some heat, basically. It's just a time bomb. It's it was it's going to go out. It, and what we're doing now is avoiding that call whenever it's 18 degrees outside. And this is Aon. There's only one place in the Dallas-Fort Worth area that I'm aware of that I can get Aon parts. And my luck is that day that it's 18 degrees outside, they ain't gonna have any high limits. And the last thing you wanna do, don't ever, ever, ever bypass a safety switch on gas heat. As mad as people wanna get, they might just have to be cold. So that's just the way it is. I would rather them be cold and complain than complain because their building burned down. <clears throat> so the only time you would wanna bypass a safety switch on gas heat or even electric heat is if you're testing it. If you wanna test it, fine. Test it, bypass it, then unbypass it when you get your test results and move on. Okay, get it back in the thing. Come on. And we'll screw this one back in. Then we got one more switch to do. And, uh, come on. Uh, where's the hole? I don't even see where the thing is. Oh, it's over to the side. Oh, come on. I'm not even mad good day today has actually been a good day and it just started don't ruin it Aon you're gonna ruin my good day by not doing there we go okay you don't want to put it in too tight because you'll break it they're not like super brittle but if you sit there and go to town as a matter of fact I would recommend not even using a impact if you're new to this thing but if you use an impact go very slow and as soon as you start to feel it grab like a little bit taut let go let that gasket is there so let it do its gasket things that it does you're hearing that because it's not all the way in yet so. double check it no nope, still not all the way in even need a different bit yeah I am gonna need a different bit it's a bit that I have is too long probably not gonna fit so we're gonna pull out the short guy right there <clears throat> and we're gonna make that work so how to attack this I don't know if y'all can see this or not, but it is not necessarily easy to get to. Oh, uh, there we go. See? If you ain't got one of these, get one of these. 
There's one screw and two. Too easy, people. It's too easy, all right? Roll out. Goes right over there. New roll out. Goes right in here. dandy tool I got here <clears throat> come on let's go right on top there's one oh the other one went sideways on me that gum it ah I can't even see what's going on right now it's going in I can tell that we're down can't really break this one. Uh, that's a thin metal frame to it. It's not gonna break. You just wanna make sure it's nice and tight. <clears throat> and then make sure your limit switch not tripped because you're gonna start off with an automatic alarm. All right, we got the thing, we got the thing, we got the stuff and the thing. This one's good to go. I'm gonna do the other side. When I turn it on, I'll come back. We can see your fire right off. All right, I'll be back. Got Two old high limits, two old rollouts, and two ignition modules. And the other side was a little more trying, uh, a lot more tight. Cut my finger, got all the stuff. Let's put some power to it. I don't know which order they're going to come on in but hopefully it's been off long enough to where it's going to call for all four stages and we get the fire worst case scenario i have a bad pressure switch and i got to come back another day but we'll see ready bring the fire bring the... Yeah. tell you what that disconnect is some kind of tight i don't know how long it's going to take to fire off i don't know if it's going to fire off i might have to go to the computer and do the thing. I don't know. But I want to look in here. Get open. Get open. Get open. Get open. Oh, 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 oh. What are you doing? Don't put your head in too far. Oh, I was going the wrong way with it. Idiot. Oh, look, that whole compressor thing just fell right off. Y'all saw it? I didn't do it. It was already like that. Probably not good to be like that, but hey, we don't worry about compressors in the winter time. Unless you got a heat pump. Ain't no heat pumps over here though. Um, it's doing the clicks and the things. All the, the clicks gotta happen before it tells the fire to happen. So we'll hurry up and wait. That's what we're gonna do. How does the thing goes like this like that and like that so we go like this there we go it's smarter than the door so we'll see how long is it going to take for these to kick on i don't know i might have to go do the computer thing in which case you're not going to see them fire off because i'll be some floors down and do we hurry up and wait? I don't know. I don't know what to do right now. I can get warm by finding one of these that's working. Actually, that's not very smart. You know, if you want to get warm on a roof, it's not smart to do it on the exhaust 
to the heat because there's you know burnt air carbon monoxide and whatnot not good for the health but i got this big refrigeration rack over. what was that oh that was here i can always get right in front of this refrigeration rack and as soon as these fans kick on i'll get warm <clears throat> or maybe they're just not going to kick on they were just on because i was standing in front of it this guy over here is on wow this this is running in cool mode right now that's weird i don't know what that's operating but right here oh yeah now now i'm warm that's the safe way to be warm all right if it's like 15 degrees outside and i get a heater running i'll hold my breath there's a guy all right i'm gonna wait on this thing to kick off talk to the guy see what's going on as much as i'm dying to let y'all see this thing fire off i'm probably not going to catch it when it actually happens so for that i apologize but what we do have is we have all of the green lights on all four of the uh, ignition modules and that's what we want to see otherwise it would be showing an automatic error that there's a switch open even though it's not trying um, the blower is running i'm probably gonna have to go down and do the typey things on the computer and you know the clicking with the mouse and whatnot make the thing come back on it should have automatically gone back to its original settings because the automation doesn't turn off when the unit turns off the automation's still running and nothing should be changing in the settings so i think that we might have a delay that's just really long i don't know people i don't know I, this is i i'm not that complex of a human all right so i really don't want to turn the next one off until I know this one's fired up, even though they control different floors. The last thing I need is them being like, we got three floors, not heating. Arr. So I would love to see this thing just go, but I'm gonna hurry up and wait. And uh, you might catch it after it's already going, you know? If that's the thing, I'm sorry. Apologize ahead of time. I know you don't want to sit. You know what we can do? Let's walk the roof. Yeah. Let me put you on my head. Man. All right. We'll walk the roof. I already did a little bit of walking. We'll do some more walking all the way around it. I believe that's a 20 ton. We got these two big condensers for their walk-ins. These walk-ins are huge, people. Go all the way across this whole floor on the top floor. And the doors, maybe I can sneak a peek in with y'all in a little bit. The doors are uh, soft. So someone designed it horribly because they condensate like crazy. They have an air curtain that goes inside the door panels as I guess it's supposed to be their insulation. I don't know. That's the dumbest design I've ever seen because air is going to leak. And when you have cool air, going to warm air you're going to have condensation so they got towels all up along the bottom of the doors and they asked me about it I'm like yeah the way to fix that is to get real doors i don't know what to tell you like you can't that, the design is horrible but anyway that's what these guys go to um we got a chiller here glycol chiller i don't like messing with those glad the fella that was here before that just i just talked to he does this thing I'll let him do it. That's his. He can have it. I don't want to mess with him. I don't know what this goes to, but I can tell you it probably controls at least eight, at least eight heads. So they're ductless. I don't even know where the, where's the thing go? I don't even see a line set, which really confuses me. There's not even a line set attached to it. How does it work? Is this 
Oh, here it is. This is the line set. <laughs> Thought I used that Wi-Fi refrigeration. Okay. Yeah, that goes into the big thing. Oh, I don't know what it goes to. Big exhaust fans. Uh, one big thing with these is you got to make sure that your belts are good. Preventative maintenance on these is is very key. Uh, wow, that guy's noisy. All right. Uh, preventive maintenance. You want to have your belts checked at least once every three months and have a couple spares laying in the thing. So when one does pop, you just swap her out. You don't have to go to the supply house and get more. And we got action? We don't have action. That one's going to town. What about this side? Still nothing. All right, well, let's go over here. This is our 60 ton little bitty guy that one's not working we're gonna do that one next that one's going nice and hot I kind of burned my hand a little bit shouldn't burn your hand one stage over here going like crazy this is a 50 ton question mark I think it's a 50 ton and this one is firing it's only got two stages of heat and they're both going like crazy there's another split don't know what that goes to not gonna lie oh look smoke's coming out of the thing there's more exhaust fans over there this is our big fella 130 what did i say i say big i might put a link in the description for what big actually is and then y'all are gonna be like that's not big whenever i show you the one that i walked into uh, good thing i'm skinny um this fella had issues when I came out here. It had a couple of uh, fuses that were blown. I did replace them, but it doesn't matter because they're for the cooling. Exhaust fan, exhaust fan, exhaust fan, exhaust fan, exhaust fan. That one's working. It's got the thing coming out of the top. Exhaust fan. All the exhaust fans, okay? Lots of kitchens in this place. I think every floor has a kitchen. The bottom floor has lots of kitchens uh, so they probably share and this one's at set temp it's not even doing stuff the blower is going that's not much to this roof they put a lot of stuff in a little area um, but hey it works there's plenty of area to walk around to work in and um, I'm stand right here and let this thing warm my legs up the hotel not it's not a hotel it's an apartment complex Woo, howdy that thing's tall i would hate to live up there imagine moving in like yeah we got you an apartment on the 31st floor oh okay thanks how am i going to carry all of my stuff to the 31st floor yeah couches and beds and whatnot i don't know i live in a house so I'm not ever going to live in a place like that. That's just me. You do you. Okay? You do you. That's the whole roof. We're still not doing stuff. Um, let me pop it open and see if there's any error codes. I really think this is worthless even checking, but we're going to check it anyway. Let's see. VFDs are hot and running. That's good. This one's showing a fault. That's probably because I cut the communication to it. So these are a part of the comms for the automation. I'm going to have to go down and I'm going to have to get on the dang computer and figure out what's going on with that. I would love to have done this hot. Uh, just run too much of a risk of blowing a transformer if I had more room to work with and it was more wide open I could do it all while it's hot as soon as you plug in the last thing it just goes whoa look at that I didn't do that okay there's compressors in here not working oh look there's the fuses right there oh you know if they're any good not me didn't do it I don't know what to say I'm gonna leave this one alone because I did not do that I'm gonna pretend like we didn't see that. See what? 
Exactly. Exactly. Didn't see anything. Those fuses are for the compressors, not for the heating. <coughs> All right. I'm going to go down and figure some stuff out. I'll be back. Damn it. Stupid computers. Dumb computers. So, basically what I did was I forced them to come on because the set points on the computer are not changeable. So it was at set temp, I hit the force valves button and we have fire. for the other two that are already running. I'm not worried about that. Now let's go to the second one. Uh, I'm not even going to show you this thing because it's the same stuff. It's this guy right here. But I'm going to button this guy up and um, all the stuff is working the way the stuff's supposed to be working. Uh, we're going to just go do more stuff. I don't know. I got one more thing to do, so um, till next time, people. Deuces, unless I have issues over here, in which case I'll get back with you and let you see all the problems. Uh, if not, catch y'all next time. What's up, people? So I'm gonna post this one separately because this is just gonna be a quick little lesson on gas heat. I know I did it last winter, but. Yeah, if you're just now tuning in, maybe you don't want to scroll through all the videos. I don't know. So this is going to be simply gas heat. Simply explained. I don't care what unit you're on. It's got these big AA ons here. I'm sure that's how you pronounce that. I'm kidding, people. I know how to pronounce it, all right? And gas heat's the same with these or your unit in your house. If it's gas, it's generally going to work the same. I say generally because there's always exceptions. People are going to be all weird with these overcomplicated blah, blah, blah. Heat pumps are a little, a lot different because they run off of electric. So I'm just talking about gas heat. Simply explain. You need a few steps, okay? And this is why they're so easy to diagnose. Gas heat's the easiest thing in the world. First thing you need is you need a call. That means the thermostat needs to say, hey, we need it to be warmer in this space area because it's not warm enough. So it sends your voltage to a controller. Well, in this unit, it's a controller. In your home units, it's gonna be a control board, or it may just go directly into the heating circuit, which is the ignition module. And then everything's controlled by the module after that. So your ignition module, is going to be this filler right here that thing is going to say okay they want to get the warm stuff happening so it's going to say let's go through our safety checks first okay is all are all my limit switches closed you got a rollout switch which is right yeah right there you got a high limit switch which is let me go see it right back there okay the high limit will cut the unit off if the heat gets too high and the rollout switch will cut the thing off if your flame rolls back on your burners okay uh, there's reasons for that so if you just come up on a unit and you got a rollout switch that's open don't just assume it's a bad rollout switch make sure that it's not actually rolling out because if the flames rolling out you got problems with your airflow your inducer motor here isn't running or your you got holes in the heat exchanger you got problems you got to look into if your high limit is opening don't just replace it all right make sure that it's not actually getting too hot 
one of the reasons that it would get too hot, one of the main reasons, is going to be that your blower ain't running. Okay? Whole new issue, whole new diagnosis, but hey, now we're going, we can go, okay, these things are working, they're all closed. Let's go to the next thing. Your inducer motor will come on. Okay, the little board thingy over here goes, hey, turn that thing on. Induced draft motor, okay. And once it comes on, there's a proving switch right here. And it looks the same in your house, okay? It's like a disc shape. Uh, it's gonna have a diaphragm inside of it. And it is going to prove airflow from the inducer. If it, the inducer doesn't run, that switch will not close and the heat will not work. Okay, let's say we're good. This thing's closed. It's getting the electricity things over to the box here. Okay, then this box goes, okay, good. We got airflow, we got the switches closed. All the safeties are good, ready, go. And it'll go, hey, gas valve right here. Turn on, let's get some gas flow in there. And then the gas valve will go, okay, boom. Shh. Gas goes. Shh. And then at the same time, your uh, ignition, now there could be different types of ign igniters. This one is a spark igniter. You could have a hot surface igniter, which is the thing that glows, and when it glows hot enough, the, the fire does the thing. This one creates a spark. It goes tick, 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 tick. Yep. Kind of like your spark plugs in your car, all right? Now, once that thing sparks and it says, okay, the flame's going. Now we got a flame sensor, okay? That's this yellow. Now it's not gonna be yellow in your house, okay? But it's gonna say flame on it or FS or flame sense or just sense or whatever. It's gonna sense that the fire is actually going. Because what happens if the fire is not going? You got the gas flowing, you ain't got no fire, and the gas just keeps going. All right, explosions happen, that's what happens, okay? We don't want that to happen. Your flame sensor will say, yes, we're good. We got flame, and then the spark will stop. Okay, then you got your thing, it's running, it's doing the thing. It's, all the good stuff's happening, you got the heat. It's, you just gotta break it down simply like that, okay? If your heat's not running, a lot of your ignition boards will tell you why. You'll have an LED here that'll flash, and you have a thing on the front that'll tell you what each flash means, okay? Now, um, Let's say you don't have the flashes, okay? All you gotta do is trace your power. Go through, make sure your limit switches are closed. Make sure your induced, our, your uh, pressure switch is closed. Make sure all that's happening. If you got all the good stuff happening, make sure you got spark. Sometimes those spark igniters will get corroded. You just gotta go in and sand them down a little bit and you got the sparks going on again. Hot surface, not hot surface igniters oftentimes they're very brittle after they've been used for a while sometimes they break hey just get a new one stick it in there call it a day all right easy stuff all right you can obviously tell right off the bat if this thing ain't working because you know it won't turn on or when you touch it it's about hot as the sun you know that thing's probably bad all right it's simple if you got any questions let me know this is a quick in and out gas heat as simple as I can put it. Yes, there's more other things sometimes, but this is really the basis of what you're gonna find in probably 98% of your gas issues. Now, I mean, that's pretty much all. You know, make sure your gas is turned on. I don't know, that's a thing. Sometimes the gas valve won't open when it's trying to open. You just test your voltage here. If you're getting voltage and you ain't got no gas flow, well, that thing ain't opening. That happens. It is what it is. Uh, that's all I got for you today. I'm gonna fire this puppy up, and we're gonna we're gonna see if it if it's got the onions. It makes it cook. Let's cook some things, and I doubt that y'all are gonna be here long enough for this thing to actually fire off, or for you to see it fire off, because it's got to go through all the system checks and the clickety clacks and whatnot. Um, but on this one, I replaced the rollout, the high limit, and the and the uh, ignition module when I did that because the ignition module was saying that a limit switch was open. All right, I tested the limit switches, neither one of them was open. So we have a bad ignition module. And I replaced the, the safety switches because why not? They're cheap. 
they're going to go bad, you might as well just replace them. And, and it's simple. You replace an induced fan motor. Replace your limit, your safeties. Replace your gas valve. Replace your safeties. You got a new heat exchanger. Replace your safeties. Just, just do the thing. It's easy. Easy stuff. Anyway, that's all I got for you. I'm going to wait for this clickety-clack thing to happen and this thing to turn back on. And I'll catch y'all on the next one.